that uh, dreams are not what you have when you sleep. The true dreams are the ones that don't let you sleep. He said that when you have that dream once, it's a dream. When you have it twice, it becomes a desire. And when you see it for the third time consecutively, it becomes a passion, an aim, and a goal. And that is the passion with which I want to see this fantasy that I have for India 2030. And uh, Abraham Lincoln also uh, was a dreamer. And, uh, you know, but he said one thing that makes most sense in trying to achieve this goal that I have dreamt for my nation. He said, uh, if I have six hours to cut down a tree, then I will spend the first four hours sharpening the axe. There's a great philosophy in that. In this era of instant gratification, we just keep thinking we can achieve all these goals by just tweaking this, tweaking that. It's not true. I really believe that, um, that a missionary zeal is required to make that quantum change. That can make 2030 the, what I'm dreaming about right now. And just let's look at India as a country. What a unique, unique nation, seriously. Thousands of years old of culture and tradition, uh, many, many invasions being ruled for many years, and we still somehow managed to maintain our identity. We still have somehow have managed to maintain our Indianness, our beliefs, our faith, and you know, yeah, there has been, uh, we have our drawbacks. Uh, this, you know, uh, uh, there is corruption, there is violence, there is uh, differences between the different religions and, and sects and castes and everything, but. I can't help but think, looking at India, at the geography, that we're not doing really that bad. Look at all the other nations around in the world. Uh, look at our neighbors. Compared to that, there is somebody in India who's doing something right for us to be called a growing economy and being projected as the third largest economy in 2026 and the most educated uh, and young nation in the world. And it's still functional democracy. So let's first accept the fact that there is somebody, some people in India with the right ideas and the ability to lead the nation to where we are today. Under that assumption, <laughs> under that assumption, we are also very capable of finding very unique solutions to the problems that generally the world faces. Uh, and, you know, and um, one of them, of course, uh, is the fact that we found freedom through non-violence and non-cooperation. Who would have thought that was possible? We have some other great... No, seriously, I mean, it was as radical a thought uh, uh, then as it is today. And one man in a loincloth with belief and faith and, and complete conviction was able to do that for us. You know, Mahatma Gandhi. And it's an, it's an amazing country of people uh, like Mahavir, Gautam Buddha, uh, and, uh, and Mahatma Gandhi, and, and then Bhagat Singh, who also had a dream. He dreamt then, 85 years ago, that... I dream of an India where no infant cries for the want of milk. No youngster um, is deprived of relevant education and no youth goes door to door finding a job. Sadly, it's still a dream today. And I dream of a 2030 when this dream becomes irrelevant. I dream of a 2030 when everybody is so equally satisfied uh, with what they're doing, that they're able to actually devote, devote more time back to art and culture, which is another great important aspect of our country. Now, <clears throat> we need to be a, for that to happen, we need to be a healthy nation. And when I say healthy, um, I remember preparing for a film of mine, which I which re released recently, where I had to look like a boxer, and I had these, uh, you know, biceps and triceps that had to be there, so I decided just to work on the parts that is seen outside uh, my clothes. So I was just working out on my biceps and my triceps and my shoulders, but you know what, I suddenly realized the strength that I had in my arms and biceps was not actually enough to, for me to look even fit because it is disproportionate growth. It is the kind of growth that will not make you fit or strong, but actually make you look inadequate. And that is what is happening to India today. Everybody says we are the largest economy, the we're going to be the most populated country uh, in the years to come. And, um, you know, with... with uh, uh, economic superpower and supremacy in rocket and space technology, which I am uh, privy to, and then the IT giants and smarter cities. But ladies and gentlemen, I really believe that more than smarter cities, we require smart villages. And this is going to be primarily what I talk about today. You know, a nation is only as strong as its weakest link, and rural India is our weakest link. See, it's important that... Uh, 
that growth and progress uh, goes hand in hand with the villages also getting onto the same train towards economic freedom, superpowerdom, uh, all, all the techn terms that have been coined for a successful country. But that is not happening. The reason being, we, we, we're beginning to ignore them. We're beginning to actually believe that um, uh, this is a very interesting line that I've uh, 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 you know, found where they say that everybody believes that they know what is required for, for getting the underprivileged and the poor uh, uh, up to speed with the rest of the country. Okay? And uh, we always start assuming that this is what they want. This is how we can help the poor and the villages and this is what they need. And we can't be more wrong. Because when you assume, assume and as the spelling goes, you make an ass of you and me. I'm going to tell you how that happened to a friend of mine. His name was, uh, he's a very profound doctor, uh, a gastroenterologist, and he got a call from his patient, Mr. Abdul, who said, uh, Dr. Saab, my wife is really, really ill, and she's got a big stomach ache, and she can't sit, uh, and she can't sleep, and she's in big uh, pain, can, can I come and visit you? And he said, yeah, by all means. And like all patients today, he has done his research, he's gone into the internet, and he said, usko ye ho sakta, wo ho sakta. and uh, the doctor said, don't worry, let me handle it. And he checked her out, and he said, she has an infected uh, appendix, so I have to do a surgery, and she'll be fine.